Pins, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And um, I've had a great, a great few days. <laughs> I don't know if you um, see my short where I talked about the vintage book haul that I came across at a yard sale here. Um, not too far from our house, just kind of around the corner. A little bit different neighborhood, but not even five minutes away. Um, anyway, I got a whole truckload. Not not joking, full full of books. And so, um, I've started sorting through them. I'm sure there's going to be lots of mention of them in my videos to come. But I have two here that, um, I, guys, I can't even pick favorites, right? Like, every, almost everything is just beautiful and fabulous. Um, but I did set these two out because I'm going to make something with them, or at least with one of them today. So this is a book, 1974, and it was given to a lady named Virginia Starkey, Christmas 1980, from Susan and Larry, which I love that. Um, when I was a child in 1980, I remember that year well. Um, so this is just a gorgeous book, and it is like one of those, what I call like a coffee table book, um, if you're becoming vintage, like I am, um, you remember people used to have these beautiful books. They were a large size like this, you know, um, this one is 11 and a half inches, right? By, by nine. I mean, it's a big book. And, um, you know, you'd have them on your coffee table or sitting there and we didn't have phones, right? And TV shows were just when they came on, you know, they weren't on demand. And so you would look at books and you would read and you would talk about places you visited or you would want to go to and all these exotic, beautiful birds, right? So I love that and I love that um, I've never seen this one and I can just already, my, my head is just spinning about all the beautiful things I'm going to be able to make with this one. The, the colors are just fabulous. So that was one. And then this one, Great Houses of Britain, it's even bigger. Goodness. It's um, probably about 13 inches by nine and three quarters. And it's got one and a half inch spine. Um, this one is 1960. This one, 1968. It was first published in 1965. And again, um, the paper is nice and thick and it feels so good. And um, lots of pretty images. Some are in kind of a muted color. Most are black and white. Um, but great, great um, font and print. And again, I can just imagine all the things I'm going to be able to look at that um, make with this. So um, after sorting through most of the books, there are some first editions. There's a first edition, Gone with the Wind. Um uh, I just, anyway, just on and on I could go. Um, lots of reader di Reader's Digest condensed um, books that I can make journals out of, a bunch of um, dictionaries and medical dictionaries and law dictionaries and just beautiful papers, lots of picture books, um, a bunch of books from like the 30s, 40s, 50s, um, and then ones like war editions that were printed during World War II. Um, with just beautiful, rich paper. So um, lots lots for me to choose from. Um, several first editions that I'm going to be doing some research on. Don't worry, those won't get ripped up. Um, I'm kind of checking before I, I do anything. And, you know, books that, you know, you can get anywhere at thrift books or online, eBay, whatever, for a couple of dollars. Those are the ones that I craft with. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but anyway, very excited. I'm going to be making some paper packets. And Harry and Matt, my puppy dogs, are also very excited about something happening outside. So I think what I'm going to do real quick is I showed some still pictures of these. And I'll try to um, find... I hope you guys can hear me with that crazy hysterical barking. Um, I will link the video on how to make these, but I think I'm going to make a couple of these on camera with you guys. Um, so, um, E with scrapbooking with me, um, 
she called these uh, paper bags. Um, you use one sheet of paper, and the way you know she shows you how to fold them, then it kind of just turns into this this bag. And I've become a little obsessed because I had a bunch of like digitals and scrap of papers just kind of sitting around that I hadn't used yet. So I made some kind of like like she showed. I made some with some different type of cutouts, and then I started kind of going to town. And this one I made the same way. I made it a tall and skinny bag, but then instead of leaving it open like this, I went ahead and folded it over and added um, a faux button here to have a little closure. And they're nice and thin and can go in journals. Of course, you can make them smaller, but I was really having fun making these big ones um, and then making some journaling cards to coordinate and go inside. This was just in my pile, something I hadn't used yet. Okay, so what I thought would be fun, though, is um, these were made with digitals, but let's make one with one of our book pages and just see how that goes really quick. So, um, I don't know I've got to use these birds. They are so beautiful. Look at that. Of course, the problem is going to be choosing the page to use that I'm going to fold up. Um especially since I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna work. Maybe I'll pick one that has some fun color on it, but doesn't end up using my, my little birdies just in case. So we're just gonna carefully tear a piece out. I will probably go through this book with my seam ripper and pull the pages out carefully because um, they are sewn together. Eh, I think they're sewn together. If not, they're glued in really well. Um, and uh, make sure I don't I don't tear the pages as they come out. But anyway, I've got one, and we're gonna just go with it. Um, it does have a little bit of a rough edge, which actually is fine. I'm just gonna leave it. Um, so to make these, what what he showed us is you just kind of decide what you want the front to be. I'm gonna make this be the front, and you. Fold it over, but leave about like a half an inch, quarter of an inch, just some kind of overhang. Some of mine, and, and just fold it nice and straight. Some of mine, I did a really tiny fold over. Um, these are all about a quarter of an inch. And then some, I even, and I'll show you, um, I didn't want it to cover up what I had. This one's a little bit bigger fold over. These I glued it inside so you don't even see where I folded it over. So again, lots of options. But here we're leaving, this is almost three quarters of an inch, not quite. I just eyeballed it. And then you just fold that piece over again. You just want to be straight. And this paper, guys, it's from the 1970s, but it is really nice and sturdy, so no worries. Okay, she just fold it over, and then she just did the same thing and fold it up the bottom. And then I'm going to show you how to trim it. And again, go watch her video. She gives you really good instructions and does several, um, several prototypes. I was just doing this because I wanted to make some with my new book. Okay, so this, I mean, of course, you can decide even if you want the front to have the, the um, little margin. But this will be the front of my book. And then, so once you've got those folded, we're gonna do some trimming, but turn it back over and then decide um, how far down you wanna fold it. Again, it's up to you. You can make it have a really deep fold um, or you can do what I did and I went down one and a half inches. Okay, now, I haven't made one of these in a couple of days. So now you unfold it and you're going to take your scissors and um, you want this piece to come up um, and you're going to be gluing it down. So this is the, the side we're going to be cutting out. So I'm going to angle. This is my center crease line. So I'm just angling that and I'm going to cut this whole piece off. And I'm cutting right above my score line so that it'll fold really neat. And you're not going to see this edge because it's going to be tucked up under here. So, you know, be neat, but if it's not completely straight, not the end of the world. Okay, 
And then I'm gonna angle and miter this corner off, just like that, okay? So again, let me show you what you're gonna have. You're gonna have this here and then this piece here, okay? Now this is where we wanna be careful because this is what I want the front to be, so I want there to be the slot here so that I can use it as a paper bag. So this is the side, you're not cutting it off, you're just gonna be, we're just gonna be trimming along there first. So um, take your scissors, if you guys can even see my crease line on here. Why don't I draw a line for you so you can see what I'm doing? Because it's hard for me to see it. Do -do -do. Pencil, let's see if you can see it a little bit better with me marking it. Okay, and again, I'm not, I'm just gonna cut, but not cut this way and cut it off, okay? So just trim, at least I want y'all to get ahead of yourselves. Trim right up to that center crease line, or the fold line, right there. That's it. Now this little piece here, let's make sure. It's gonna be like this, like this, like this. And then this, I'm gonna glue down, and then we'll have the opening here. So you can cut that off, or you can wrap it around and glue it down to you, which I'm gonna do. Now, I don't mind having the, seeing my folded edges, but on one of the, mine, I didn't like the pattern. So it looks like, here, here's your paper bag, right? You got all kinds of room in there. And the way I glued it, I, I did this. I folded them in and glued it down like this. Oops. So you just have a decision to make. Do you want to see your fold right here? Okay. Or not. And if you don't, just tuck it inside. Okay. Um, the other thing that I did on these, because they weren't printed on both sides, like this has um, print on both sides, is um, if if this was just plain white in there and I'm gonna notch this out, if you don't wanna see that, I already have print, you could just layer a piece of book page or another pattern paper or something under there so it's not just plain if yours happens to be plain. So let me think of what I wanna use. I'll show you what I did on the ones I made. I used this, I don't even know what this is called. Is it a slot punch or it it punches out um, obviously like a little piece like this, right? Or it can leave you a hole. And so I used it to have a little bit different shape. I'm gonna just kind of center. I think it's big enough and I'm gonna do about halfway. And see that made kind of an interesting little notch so you know you can put things in there. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink it just a touch. I love this paper, you guys. I wish you were um, able to feel it and feel how nice it feels. Just wanted a touch of ink there. Now, if this ragged edge bothers you, um, you can obviously, tear or trim that right off. I kind of like it being ragged at the top. So I am going to very carefully make sure everything is nice and fine. I'm gonna fold these, glue these two down first. And I'm gonna use my um, glue I've been talking about, the pH Neutral PVA by Lineco. And I'm gonna just glue it down. Make sure I give it enough time to grab and dry. And then, once we have it, the flaps glued, um, I'm not gonna glue this one yet because I wanna glue this whole piece to this piece and it's gonna make it nice and sturdy and not close up our little paper bag here. Everything's gonna be okay. All right, so I got a nice amount of glue and just wanna make sure it's nice and even. And then 
flip it over. And again, you could cut this piece off. I'm just going to give it a little more stability. Okay, look at that. We have a paper bag and this one's pretty big. And depending on your size of your journal, you know, if you want to tuck these in your journal or glue them in your journal, however you're going to use them, um, you want to, you know, test your journal <laughs> because obviously, you know, I've made them all different sizes. Um, here's a smaller one, a skinny one. Um, so this will be going one of my large journals and, um, it makes me happy. So there you go. And then I can decorate it, right? Um, if I want to, so I could go back to my bird book and this is where I can find something really pretty, um, that we can put on that, that little bag we just made. So let me think about that. I'm going to randomly try to find something delightful. That would make a really pretty large piece, too. I love that. The continent of Africa. Okay, guys, I could sit here and just admire this beautiful book all day. But I'm going to pick a bird. Who gets to be my first bird out of the book? And that can be a big one. <laughs> Look at that emu. How funny is that? Maybe I'll take these two, Ooh, but then I love this one. See, that's my problem. And sometimes I'll even make tags so that I can keep both both pieces intact. And, um, ah, yay. Okay, I'm going to be able to cut this um, parrot out without losing anything on the other side so I don't have to make a big commitment yet. Okay, and I have another vintage bird book that I love and that I use, and I've shown it to you guys before in other videos, um, but I love it so much. I had to get online. I found it at a vintage thrift shop place kind of here in Virginia. Never seen it before, so then I got online, and I had to find one um, so that I have one that I don't cut up, <laughs> and I can go back and look at and enjoy the birds. Um, and then I have um, a copy that I craft with. And it um, is one that you can easily find. Um, and this one, um, I looked up and there are copies of it available in different places too. Okay. And if you're interested in something like that, I suggest you just start Googling, um, look on eBay, look on thrift books, places like that. And of course, you can keep your eye out when you're at yard sales and local um, antique and thrift stores too, because sometimes you find a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Okay, so I don't wanna lose this because I like that bird. And let's see how I'm gonna do this because my bird is now taller than my pocket. But you know what? I could put this beauty on this side and that will work. I'm not gonna worry too much about distress inking. Just get a tiny touch. I think soon I'm gonna have to re-ink my distress ink pad. Um, and I have it right here, the walnut stain. And periodically, because I use it so much and I tend to leave it open while I'm crafting, I think I still have some in here. Yeah, I just put a few drops, just like that. <laughs> Let it soak in. Now I need to remember, though, not to go, because then I'll have way too much. So I'm going to close it so I don't accidentally do that. But the next time I go to use it, it won't be quite so dried up. All right, I'm going to put this bird here, and I'm probably going to find something, maybe um, something I can write or journal on. Let's see if I have one of those left. I had these out the other day. That might be kind of fun to just kind of be able to 
write on it later or whatever journal I put this one in. Now this is technically the back and if you're gonna glue it down into onto a journal page, I don't recommend you spend a lot of time decorating the back, right? <laughs> but this one I will clip into a journal or even use as a happy mail or something for a friend, something like that. So I'm gonna do that. And again, this is some great space to write. And I'm gonna put my parrot, and then I'll have to, maybe the other little bird from this page can go on the front. And will fit better. Okay. And um, some little labels or something cute would also take this up a notch, so we may do that as well. It's just fun. Finding, finding little pieces to work with. Um, I had to laugh. You know, my husband is so funny, and he is such a trooper. I we can get into some adventures together. Um, but again, we we had a mission to find a table. I needed another display table, which we did find. I think I mentioned that. I don't know what order I'm going to post all these videos in. So anyway, we found a table, but um. You know, it took us, and he did most of it, <laughs> a while to load everything up in the truck, and then the table wouldn't fit, so then we had to, luckily it was only five minutes away, but then we had to drive home, and then we had to unload everything so that we could go back and get the table that, that we had bought, and um, he just the whole time is laughing and having a good time with me, and um, anyway, I'm just sharing, you know, he's wonderful, and I am very blessed. <laughs> We had a good day together, and he um, never mentions that I don't need any more books or I have too many craft supplies. He gets it and just lets me live my best life, and um, he was watching me in the garage with all the books as I was sorting, and he just said, I'm enjoying watching you have such a good time, <laughs> which made me happy, too. Okay. All right, I wish y'all were here and could make one with me. Um, if you do decide to make one, I would love to see it. Tag me, post it on your page or something, um, and let me know what you made. Uh, you can make these any size. Just take a piece of paper and um, have at it. I love that... Um, you can make big ones, little ones. Like I said, I'm a little obsessed. Um, once I saw this um, on Ease Tutorial, because I've made other kinds of book page bags, right? And little paper bags and things. And I love making pockets and tuck spots and all of those things for all the ephemera I love to make. But I just thought the design of this one was so easy. And a lot of times I'll print out like digital kits because, you know, I'm going to make a big journal. And then yeah, there's always a page or two that maybe I just don't use and or I had planned to or I accidentally printed twice, something like that. And um, it was just fun, you know, digging through my pile and then, come, you know, having all these pretty things at the end of the day. So it was a lot of fun. And I'm just randomly grabbing some little labels and tabs um, so that we have a variety of things to look at on these. And I could keep going. Another thing that would be fun to do, like I said, I did the one with the closure. I went ahead and folded this, this part down. Um, I'm not going to do that for this one. But, um, is you know, we could sew these. Wouldn't that be pretty to add some some um, so some stitches and things? I like this, even though I think it goes this way. There's Florida. It's the United States, <laughs> um, the Earth. But um, I like it. I like um, how it turned out, and I hope you do too. So if you want to see more of the fun books that I found, um, I'll definitely, like I said, it's going to take me some time, and I'm going to put together some new... Um, paper packs for my Etsy shop. If that's something you're interested in, keep an eye out for that. Um, but if you want more videos about it or uh, me to show you some more of the treasures, let me know. 
leave me a comment. Um, thank you guys for your support. Have a great day.